welcome to the Life Pro Podcast, where today I have the pleasure of having Mary Beth Schroeder, which is from Day One Life Coach. And day uh, One Life So happy to have you here today. How you, how you doing? You know, well, it's thank you for inviting me. Um, I was glad that you contacted me. I saw a lot of what you're doing with your podcast, and I love it. I just think that you're going to be huge. So today our topic is about, I appreciate that, uh, I, uh, today our topic is about uh, improving your relationship with alcohol. So, I mean, we're not here to tell people whether they should have alcohol or not. We're here to educate people on the effects of alcohol and let people make their own decision. That being said, tell us a little bit more about your journey with or without, with or without alcohol. Just tell us more about your, your life journey. Okay. And, and, and that's a great point that you just made. Number one thing I want to say is nobody's going to quit something that they still enjoy and love doing. So if you feel like you have a healthy relationship with alcohol already, you know, maybe this might um, plant a seed for somebody, you know, and um, but so essentially I was, I'm going to go back to childhood because I think a lot of addiction starts in childhood. I know it does with, you know, traumas and you have big T traumas and little T traumas. So you probably have a lot of younger uh, viewers and listeners that I'm sure. And uh, I was born in 74. So I'm a 70s and 80s child. And the only reason I bring that up is because it's a lot different. Um, There was no coddling. (laughs) Being a child of the 70s and 80s, the parenting style was way different. Let me tell you, like I was left to my own devices a lot. Um, I had tons of freedom and um, like, for instance, so my parents divorced when I was five and literally I, I remember it. So I remember being two. I have a freakish memory, just, just so you know. So I remember when I was five, though, I'm outside on my driveway playing by myself, playing ball. And um, my dad walks up and he's like, well, hey, I'm not going to be living here anymore. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, I'm moving out, but I'll see you like every other Sunday. And I just remember being like, that was a big T trauma, right? Right. Because I was like, my little five-year-old brain is like, oh my gosh, you know, um, parents can leave. I never knew that before. And now is my mom going to leave? And then that's what that is, is that's an abandonment wound, right? So I can, since I've done the work on myself, I can trace back to, okay, well, that was a pretty big trauma in my life where I needed some sort of self-soothing. And back then, like my mom didn't even say anything. Like there wasn't a discussion. There wasn't this whole big family discussion of divorce. And it was just like all, all my brain knew is, oh my God, my dad moved out. So can my mom move out? So that was, that was when I think it started. And then there's also the little T traumas, right? So one day, like I had a blankie, okay? I had a blankie. And I, I remember being just right after the divorce situation, I woke up one morning and it was gone. My parents decided I was too old at five years old to have a blankie. That was a trauma that took away my self soothing. Now, I actually wanna say that's almost a big T. Like you guys might think it's a little T, but that was a big T trauma for me because that's like was, I had anxiety over that. And also you feel like a sense of betrayal. And I'm not telling your audience this for like a victim role thing. I'm just saying like, this is just something that I learned. Like, when did it all get started? When did that trauma get started where I turned to alcohol, right? For relief and self-soothing. And I think it started way back then. Like a lot of our programming is before we're seven years old, right? Right. So having said that, um, just a little bit about myself is I am a, uh, I've been a single mom since my son was about three and he's about to turn 20. So I'm divorced. Um, and I would say that, you know, that's like, I probably started drinking a lot around that time was when, when I was getting divorced and stuff a lot more. But I do want to go back to one thing that happened when I was 18. So I've always been super spiritual and I've always been um, very much into personal development and growth. And even as a child, I was reading like self-help and psychology books. So it was just in my soul to be that way. But so when I was 18, I was reading this book on near death experiences and it triggered this, what, what I know now. Now, remember when I was 18, that was what, like 1993, there was no internet. There was nothing like that. Like, right. But I was reading this book and it triggered this amazing like enlightenment experience. Like it was like I was remembering and I was in this crazy, 
vibration and it sounds wacky but if, have you heard of enlightenment omid have you heard? yeah okay so it's like a spiritual awakening so to speak and i was suddenly in this like very elevated state where i was getting all these like it downloads and it was like just pure joy people who've had near-death experiences say this but it's also people who like meditate and the woo woo stuff like that really right. try and i was just reading a book and it triggered this two week long amazing experience of things i can't unknow you just felt you like you connectedness all of this unconditional love and joy not of this earth it was like spiritual level and i can tell you that's another time i really was like i went to the library because i was like what is happening to me and that's when i learned it's a spiritual awakening it's nirvana it's enlightenment oneness yeah. all of this stuff okay so i went there learned about that and no i couldn't connect with anybody nobody knew what i was talking about i sound like a crazy person i get it i get it so there wasn't an internet where i could just connect with a little tribe a little group right. of other so i started drinking a lot then because it was the closest thing i could find in my teenage mind to that level of connectedness but it was nothing near okay but i can tell you that's when i started drinking a lot um and then when i was in 2006 i found um the secret the book have you heard of the book the secret oh yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. So then like that law of attraction, like it resonated with me immediately because I kind of always knew like, man, when I think this way and feel this way, this happens. Like I saw that whole energetic thing and I knew sometimes I was repelling people and sometimes I was attracting people. And I was like, what is this? You know, I just knew. So th that explained it all. And I was like, OK, that's my thing. So that's probably the what planted the seed of sobriety for me is because I learned all about the law of attraction and how our thoughts and our feelings really affect our personal reality each and every day. And when I was drinking, I was very aware that it was lowering my vibration and I really wanted to um, improve that, which I didn't right away, by the way, yeah. it was, it was a journey to quit drinking. And, you know, cause I had been drinking since I was, my first drink was when I was 12. So I was on vacation. Like I said, I had a lot of freedom, but I was on vacation with a friend and, we got into it and I was like, man, this is the answer to all of my problems. Right. 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 I had anxiety. I was, I was anxious. Yeah. And a lot of people do self-medicate. Yeah. With, and I think that well, I just had generalized anxiety my entire life, ever since the divorce thing. And I yeah. use alcohol to self-medicate for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So going going back to that, I think there's different reasons why people drink, right? Absolutely. There's, Absolutely. And, and I, you know, off the top of my head, I could think of a few different ones. So let's get into that. Like, you know, you were self medicating at the time. But what are what are the different levels of of why people drink? I think social anxiety is the number one, I think, because okay. if you didn't have social anxiety, then why do you need it? Like you would just yeah. go out and have fun without it. But right. people love being that uninhibited feeling, right? Like, yeah, free to say and do whatever they want without you know being anxious so i think that's the number one also just to have fun right um right. to relax and unwind and it's socially acceptable to the point where you're weirder if you don't drink in our right. society right collectively our society has made a decision that you know if it's cool to drink and you're pretty lame if you don't drink and you actually it's the one drug <laughs> that people can you know, quit and then be an outcast all of a sudden from their friends you stop getting invited by certain groups because you know and i don't think it's personal um it's more like it makes people uncomfortable mm -hmm. with themselves you know like if you're sober and then yep. one thing you remember everything right you know and and you're not on you really aren't on the same page as someone who's drunk when you're sober you just aren't right, right. alcohol slows us down it's a depressant it dumbs down our brain um it, it does take you down quite a few notches so it's it's it is different so i can see why people would be self-conscious and not yeah. want to be around a sober person when they're drunk <laughs> so let's talk let's talk more about that like so you get you what how does that uh, how does alcohol really affect us you, you talked a little bit about it short term, but how about long term? Like, or how about even the next day? Like maybe get a little bit more into the effects of alcohol so people kind of understand what they're doing. 
to themselves. Right. So on a, on a, let's talk about the vibrational thing is that's like the main reason I quit. Cause I knew too much about the law of attraction and how much it lowers your energy. It lowers your frequency. And then you're not going to attract as well. You're, you're going to be your quality of sleep is crap. You know, like people are like, Oh, I slept really well, but it's not the same quality of sleep. You are not getting the sleep you would if you had not imbibed. Okay. Um, your, your sleep quality that affects your whole next day and everything that you do, it affects your, your mood. Um, of course, you know, everyone who, well, not everyone, but most people understand a hangover, right? You're dehydrated. You've got the headache. You're just not going to be your, your best self. Okay. So, and that was right. another reason why I quit. You know, you guys, I didn't go to AA, by the way. Um, I literally like, that's why I love teaching the law of attraction is because I use all of the, these law of attraction techniques to quit. I, I did not do any type of program at all. You know, I just knew right. you, I got to that point where I knew too much, even that experience back when I was 18, you know, you can't unknow certain things once your mind is expanded. So yeah. it always bothered me. And that's what I want to tell your viewers here is like, if you have that sneaking suspicion that, you know, alcohol might be holding you back or might not be serving you, then you're not going to have that inner peace when you drink, you know, especially the next day, you're going to have shame and guilt. And that, that I got to that point where I could no longer enjoy it because I knew too much. And I knew like that I was dragging myself down three steps forward, two steps back all the time. And I was never going to be my best self as long as I continued to entertain alcohol in my life. I, I knew that I was going to be better. And of course, my, my life improved in every way, shape and form every, yeah. every way. And so if you have that feeling like maybe alcohol is dragging me down, um, just really listen to that. That's your inner voice yeah. <laughs> telling you, like, maybe it's not for you. Maybe if you let it go, um, at least try it for 30 days. I would suggest yep. do a 30 day detox and see how you feel. Cause I can tell you the first time I did that, I was like, holy moly, I didn't know I could feel this awesome. Like, cause I, I was yep. so used to it as just a habit. You guys, sometimes it's just a habit. Um, my clients aren't necessarily, they're not going to be the ones who are white knuckling it. They're going to be the ones who have already established, Hey, it's not serving me anymore. Um, yeah. and I want to do something about it what advice do you give to people? I mean, I feel like it's a learning curve. Like you have to yeah. learn to have fun without drinking. And it, it seems like it would be a process. So what advice do you have for people that might want to do it, but for social reasons or whatever, can't like, how do you, how do you learn to have fun without alcohol? It's practice. It practice, practice. It was practice for me. It was not overnight for me. I do not want to give that impression at all. It was a journey, but probably what I want people to understand is it doesn't have to be that long. Listen to me when I say, <laughs> do not let all the years go by that I let go by. Right. I'm um, like, I, if I could make one decision differently, it would be to do this much sooner. And because yeah. my life changed so much for the better. And like I said, if you're one of those people that feels like it's, it's, it is holding you back and you're questioning it. If you have that question already, then you're right. It yeah. is. And so what do you say? Practice. What do you what do you say to those people that say, I need a vice, I need something to help me get away from reality? Uh, what? Plenty more of healthier alternatives, because um, something to keep in mind is alcohol does it, it really does. It's not advertised because then that alcohol in industry is big business, but it does cause all types of cancer. It is proven um, it causes. Well, there's a neuroscientist that I would want to, I would encourage everyone to look up. His name's Dr. Andrew Huberman, and he does this amazing, I think it's like three and a half hours long, but it, he, it's called um, alcohol. You know, he, he's, he's all about alcohol. So if you type, if you just type his name and alcohol, it pops up all the things it does to your brain um, there. He actually says there's really no safe amount of alcohol, but we're not going to ever hear this because it's hidden information because it's such a huge moneymaker. But um, other than cancer, it does destroy your organs. I'm 48. I literally, um, someone who went to high school with me died a few days ago from liver failure. It doesn't take that, as much as people think to really destroy your organs. And we also have, as you know, I'm sure all of these other chemicals in our foods that didn't used to be there. 
Um, people are taking a lot of medications. People are taking all these, even supplements can, you can overdo it and hurt your liver. So it's that combination. We're not getting away with drinking like maybe a generation ago. We used to be able to because our foods are, are, are filled with chemicals too. So our organs in general just have so much more to deal with. So having alcohol on top of all the chemicals and processed foods that we have now um, definitely is something you want to think about. It's, it's not the same as it used to be um, on your organs. Yeah. So tell us, tell us more about, you know, your journey of quitting. Uh, when, how old were you when you decided to stop and how, what was that process like? So I did, I did the um, moderation for a long time before I actually quit, which was only about three, three and a half years ago is when I finally quit. That's why I'm urging people don't do it. Like that's the one thing that I would do differently is I would have quit much sooner, but I dragged it out for too long and moderation would work for me about <laughs> 10 times in a row. I could be like, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have one glass or two glass, but then that 11th time, you know, yeah. it, it didn't work. Like, so I was always back to where I started, where I overdid it. And, you know, I'm five feet tall. I'm, I'm a small person. It didn't really take much for me to overdo yeah. it. So that's also something for people to think about. Like we're all different. We all react different to alcohol. And so only you can know yourself, yeah. like, you know, that's something for you to ask yourself. Um, so I did try to moderate, but scientifically speaking, moderation does quit working. Um, especially when you were like, I drank for decades. Right. And, but this is a scientific fact. So alcohol is a depressant. So what happens when you have alcohol, your, your body will begin to create stimulants from that first drink, just from that first drink. And it's going to go to your usual. So let's say I usually have a bottle of wine. So my, my body is going to create that amount of stimulants, even though I decide to have one glass. OK, it's going to already create enough for my usual. So I was like, why am I still even though I only had one glass of wine, 3 a.m. I'm like, my heart's racing, you know, because that alcohol wears off after your last glass. It's about four to five hours. And so that would equate to about 3 a.m. for me. And then all you feel is those stimulants. Right. So my heart would be racing. And I had anxiety. Some people call it anxiety. And, you know, unfortunately, I learned, well, the way to get rid of that is to have another drink. And that's a right. bad cycle. You, you can imagine what a bad cycle that is. I mean, I do know people who keep a, a like some a drink next to their bed f for that exact reason. Yeah. Everybody's nervous system is different. That's not going to happen to everybody. But most people I know, um, especially women, my age in their 40s because alcohol has had does such a number on your hormones like and our hormones are already kind of whack yeah. <laughs> but, so they're going to add alcohol and they're it, it's like it makes you a mess it, it creates anxiety it dysregulates your nervous system and then you're just left with that those stimulants in your system and it it's i couldn't do it anymore like i was like yeah. this is not working it was a no-brainer for me at that point because right. i didn't want another day of anxiety <laughs> right and you can't so, drink in the morning you know yeah well <laughs> like, i mean going going to that like a, a few questions for you is uh how do you know when you know obviously no um, no amount of alcohol is safe but there are people that are classified as alcoholics which uh, it's very unclear to me uh, that's one question is how do you i mean how do you know if you have a problem like right so, i think like so i don't even consider i don't maybe other people would consider me an alcoholic by definition i would have been an alcoholic right. however i think that i had an unhealthy relationship with alcohol that was just a really bad habit that i learned as an early teen yeah. i do not consider myself an alcoholic i think right. i have to alcohol and that's called AUD alcohol use disorder and that is something you have to ask yourself how is it affecting your life does it have any negative effect on your life and then you can't quit that's a problem yeah. right. that's when it becomes a problem is that you know it's having negative effects and you're having a hard time quitting that's when you know that it's alcohol use disorder and you've stepped right. over that line of just having like a relaxing glass of here and there, you know, you almost yeah. feel like you need it. It becomes an obsession. 
I do feel like there's a little bit of OCD. Like I need a drink. I need to go to happy hour. Like you feel like you need it. You shouldn't drink for a reason. Really, if you're drinking for a reason, yeah. um, like to numb out, uh, Brene Brown has this beautiful saying, it's we cannot selectively numb our feelings. We end up numbing all of the good ones too. So we numb the joy. We numb that, you know, all of the all of the highest frequencies of love and joy we can't we we actually begin to not be able to feel those anymore right. yeah you numb all of it you you just are numbing your emotions you're supposed to feel emotions like by the way i need to say this about um the law of attraction um there's a lot of misinformation out there and you the good vibes only stuff is actually very toxic you you want to feel your emotions do not suppress your emotions do not deny your emotions use them as guidance they are guidance um as soon as you start suppressing that those feelings are still there in your body whether you're suppressing yeah. it, it it's it's going to affect your body in the way of uh, uh, i'm a holistic life coach so it's mind body spirit that's my right. coach approach and you are you are going to suppress them and it could be turned into disease in your body dis-ease of right. some kind so you're not really getting away with anything when you numb yourself out that those feelings are still in there so you want to yeah. become the observer of those feelings yeah. you want to witness them allow them acknowledge them don't don't like yeah. join yeah. in depression but just be really aware of that and that's that's what a lot of my coaching is about is that self-awareness yeah um because you can't heal anything until you're aware of it right yeah, absolutely. And so I think that's what the work is about. I think that would be my main point of that I would want to make to people out there is really reflect on why you're drinking. And if you're if you're drinking to numb your pain, then you need to get to the root of that problem. You make sure you're you're drinking in a good place. And because I know I know like most people listening to this podcast are going to have the reaction of I don't care. I will pay the price because I want to have fun and they'll they'll think that, oh, I only drink once a week or so or once a month. It's I'm not really doing anything to to hurt myself long term. They're just going to have that view and that's OK. Uh, they're making that decision based on what they want for themselves. Um, that's their decision. But mm -hmm. what do you have to say to those people um, that say, oh, I, it's it's not a big deal. I'm I'm having fun. At it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth the the pay price I have to pay. I get it. I get those people. I was one of those people. Um, hopefully, I'm planting a seed because I would have been so annoyed with myself. Like you know, the the former me would have been like, oh God, shut up. Like I like yeah. drinking. You know, yeah. I get it. I totally get to you people who think I'm super annoying. I get. It. So this is just planting a seed for you. Um, I would just try to just think about alternatives. There are healthy alternatives. So yeah. uh, like, for instance, when I quit, you do want to replace a bad habit with a good habit. So when I quit, I um, kind of became a gym rat and I overdid it. Like, so, you know, cause instead of going to happy hour, I went to the gym, right? So that's good. That's a good addiction. But I did, you do need to get to that point of balance. Like I said, as a holistic life coach, we can even do healthy habits out of balance and get obsessive with them, especially yeah. if you're me and you have an addictive personality you know I, I can i can turn anything into an addiction <laughs> yeah it's a gift so i would say that um you know if if it's not for you it's not for you at this time and maybe all, all i'm doing is just planting a seed for your future i wish that i had heard this when i was in the midst of it i really didn't know anybody yeah. who was a role model like everyone i know drank everybody I mean, except my mom my mom didn't drink but like everybody else in my life drank as much or more than me do you know how yeah. hard it is to know you have an issue when you're comparing yourself to other people just like you you don't you don't even see it i was yeah. the hardest thing for people to see is themselves you know and i was blind to it i i definitely was in a lot of denial um i you know i just didn't i i just had no idea but um so denial is real Denial is a real thing. And I can tell you when I took that 30 day, that's what I would tell somebody is just try 30 days off. See how you feel that brain fog lifted. There's that clarity. So amazing. Um, if you're someone who drinks most most days, like it's just like, wow, I didn't your this amount of your sleep quality. You just feel so much more balanced. And 
um, just not having a hangover is, I mean, a gift <laughs> in and yeah. of itself, right? Yeah, I think I think it just becomes a way of life for people and they don't understand that they're feeling this way either the night of or the, the day after. And if they really take the time to just reflect on how they're feeling and just be more present in their being and really understand. And obviously it goes back to respecting yourself, you know, and just really yes. having that um, respect and that like, you know, if you care about yourself you want to have a better life, which is what Life Pro is about, right? Educating people on how to have a better life. If you care about yourself, you care about the people around you, you want to live a happier life and more energetic life. And as you say, law of attraction uh, to have better relationships, you know, this, this could be a good step. Um, and I think too, like you just said, like, I don't, I don't remember being educated about all of the negative things about alcohol. I didn't know it caused cancer. I didn't like, and, and anyone do your own yeah. research. Listen to me, it causes cancer. Um, it ca I, I know people who died of liver cancer and even like after they quit, it was too late that it already yeah. progressed. Um, yeah. So do your own research on the negative effects of alcohol and also ask yourself, how does alcohol affect me in a positive way? What is the yeah. answer to that? Like it's, and don't lie to yourself about that. What are the positive right. benefits? Like, what are you really yeah. getting out of it? You know, I, I do understand the fun factor because it is fun for a while, right? But that it's so temporary to me. It became this way over time. So temporary, not worth that trade off of yeah. the next day. Like, so yeah, a couple hours, I'm like, woohoo, feeling good. This is fun. Yeah. Like, doing, but the next day, that's a lot of hours or and, and my sleep time was ruined. It, it doesn't it wasn't balanced. Yeah. Or as the fun versus the what I had to pay to have that fun. Yeah. <laughs> what was the cost of that fun? So right. and that's something only each individual needs to ask themselves. Um, and, and there's going to be a lot of people listening, like you said, who still think it's worth the trade off. And that's OK. You're, no one's yeah. going to quit until they're ready. And I'm not sitting right. here trying to tell right. people you have to quit because I definitely would, would not have listened to myself when I was still having fun with it. I yeah. wouldn't have. And you know, that's the purpose of our podcast here is like, there's, there's a lot of things we run into and we say, we wish we knew, we wish we knew. And we're uh -huh. here just, we're just here to educate you and, and you can make the right decision. Um, speaking of education, tell us more about day one. What, what, tell, tell us more about your program, um, your clients and what what your services are so we can educate people on that. OK, so day one life coaching. Um, that's what I created it about five years ago. And honestly, it was for the purpose of like teaching people. So helping them not make the same mistakes that I made. I'm very, very passionate about it is my, you know, what I love to do. Like, I am so excited to do what I love. And so I am a holistic life coach. Like I said, mind, body, spirit. I love to teach the law of attraction and it ties into everything. So my clients will be, I actually have teenagers and adults and I, a lot of success with teenagers because there's think about the, they don't have as many limiting beliefs as we have as adults, because they haven't had as much time to practice all that negativity. Right. So there it, it's, almost like I can work with them faster because of that. They're so much more open, but the with um, so we get into all of that. There's always a reason people are the way they are. And just so your audience knows the difference between a life coach and a therapist, a therapist is going to be more like talk therapy where they focus more on the past. I do like to get to the root of things, but a coach's main purpose is going to be present and future, creating a, a game plan, my clients are going to have a goal of leveling up in some way. Sometimes they struggle with relationships and dating. Sometimes they struggle with a, an addiction. So that's not only alcohol, food is a huge one that I work with. So weight loss, um, just people, sometimes it's career. Anyone who feels stuck in a certain area of their life, and the reason I call myself a law of attraction coach first and foremost is I can use a law of attraction to help any area of your life. It applies like the law of attraction is not a religion. It's all about energy and it's going on whether you believe in it or not. It's happening. It's like the law of gravity. You don't get to say, oh, I don't believe in gravity today. It's happening. So you might as well learn how to use it deliberately and create. We have so much more control 
over our daily life, then people realize so much more. And unfortunately, we weren't taught this. We were not empowered with it. And so another reason I like to teach that is because of how much it changed my life. Every aspect of my life, and I can literally say everything shifted um, when I started to really dig into the law of attraction on a daily basis. There is not one day that I am not aware every minute of it actually, like it's become me. So my clients will have to probably be into that a little bit and or open to it at least. So because they're not going to like me. and. You know, <laughs> they're not they're going to be like this chick is out there man talking about energy all the time yeah. but guess what i'm not for everyone yeah. and that's okay it is what worked for me so i know it can work for other people and yeah. like i said i didn't do aa and i need to insert here that aa is fine if you're into aa please continue doing that if it works for you it's a great it's a great distraction it's great to um, meet other people you get a sponsor you have something to do in place of that happy hour time you always want to get distractions and new hobbies and new passions when you quit any when you quit anything distraction is so important so i'm not i never would tell anyone don't yeah. do AA. but but those probably aren't going to be my clients because with the law of attraction, what I teach is completely different. I teach, let's not talk about the old vibration. We're, we have a new identity now. We're creating a new vibration. Like, I don't, I think when you keep discussing in groups, all the old stuff, all the old stuff, you, you get yourself stuck in that, that old stuff. Yeah. So we're like, I literally can tell you that I'm like, I just, I changed my identity. I am no longer that person who goes to a restaurant and orders wine. I'm no longer that person. I have a new identity. I had an energetic shift and not many people are going to change without changing their thoughts, their beliefs and their energy. You're not going to change. So it, it, it becomes that way. And that's what I teach people. Otherwise, you're white knuckling it. You guys like you, you are white knuckling it. If you're just sitting there talking about all these old ways and old things you used to right. do in a group circle like that wouldn't work for me so like it actually would i've been to aa it made me want to drink i couldn't wait to get out of there <laughs> so it's so those would be the people who are going to be attracted to me that doesn't mean their way is bad it means you're going to be attracted to my way if that's how you feel if, if sitting in right. a group it sound like if you want to level up if you feel stuck if you feel like in any area of your life you know, that's what, that's who I'm going to help mind, body, spirit. I'm going to talk about spiritual stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love what you said, taking a negative, replacing it with a positive. Like, I think that's the epitome of all of this, right? Just being positive and probably why you didn't like AA, maybe it was just too negative and didn't have too much of a positivity. Felt that way for you know? me. Yeah. yeah. It made me and feel it, stuck. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to, you got to do what works for you, you know, and that's really the bottom line. You, we all make educated choices and, it's all about learning. Um, that being said, my next question to you is what is one thing you want to teach the world? And it doesn't have to be alcohol related. It could be anything. One thing I want to teach the world is um, it's about our thoughts and how, like I said earlier, how much control that we actually have over our personal reality. And it is not, this is so important. It is not harder to think positively and optimistically. It's not harder. It's just, you have more practice Think in the negative thoughts. You've practiced it more longer. And like I said earlier, same with learning to have fun without drinking. Practice, practice, practice. So we literally brainwash ourselves with negative stuff. And we can also brainwash ourselves with the positive stuff. So follow positive people. What we think about mm -hmm. gets bigger. What we focus on grows. So right. what is your focus? Like, are you in a victim role where somebody did this to me and somebody hurt you? I used to be there too. Oh my gosh. Like when I was going through my divorce, I was like, people probably wanted to hang themselves listening to me talk about, you know, like, uh, uh, what a victim I was. So as long as somebody did something to us, we're going to stay in that victim role. As long as we don't take personal responsibility yeah. for our life and look at it from a different perspective, our focus is everything. So if you're focusing on being a victim, you're going to always eternally be a victim. Yeah. So and it's easy. Control. I teach empowerment. Empower right. yourself. It's easy to play the victim victim because you're waiting for everybody to bring positivity to you. That's what you're looking for. But you don't need to do that. You bring the positivity out in yourself. Like you said, we're all in control of all of our actions, emotions, and we're in control of our happiness. And it it, it doesn't come in a bottle. Uh, no. It comes. It comes 
it's deeper than that. And it's up to us individually to to figure that out. And and we owe ourselves the self-respect, um, self-esteem and, and all those great things to to use whatever platform, whether it's coaching or therapy or exactly. even med- meditation. Um, you know, another thing that is helpful is journaling and just kind of being, you know, your affirmations and and being really think of the positive, think of all the good things in your life and just really focus on the positive to, to, you know, to attract positivity. And, and I, 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 I'm a firm believer of energy, but you're absolutely right. You have, you have to believe in it for it to work. That's the funny part. Like if you don't well, believe it's in it, working, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's always working. It's always working. But right. if you think about this, if you don't believe in it, you're going to continue, you're going to get proof in your life that it's not working because right. you, if you're, that's still attracting that. Yeah. So, so might as well hop on board and right. like you just made me think of, so are a lot of us with, with our thoughts, the reason it's so hard is because most of us are, our subconscious minds running the show. Okay. Right. Our subconscious mind is running the show. It's like 95%. So we have to make that subconscious stuff. We have to bring it out into our conscious mind, which is the creative mind. So right. when you, cause most of us are just like on, you know, just going through our days like little robots all of our thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before and most of those are negative and most of those are repetitive so you've got to get a hold of that you guys you've got to start being mindful and just being aware bringing that into your awareness because nobody's going to change until their thoughts change right nobody you have to start just really catching yourself is what i call it just catching yourself with those beliefs those limiting beliefs you know, the biggest limiting belief that I, I see is like people believe in what I say, but they're like, oh, but that that's for other that works for other people, but not for me. No, we're all equal. It's it, it can work for anybody, you know, just right. yeah. and it's a self-esteem thing, you know, getting people to realize that they're already worthy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you, you mentioned one book already. Uh, is there a book that had a major influence on your life? Well, the, I think I mentioned a podcast, a Dr. Andrew Huberman, okay. that's yeah, a yeah. podcast. And I just, I was just saying fine, like if anyone's on YouTube type Dr. Andrew Huberman and alcohol, okay. and, but so the book, um, I actually, you were asking me that one. So I, so there is how I've been talking about thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Um, so there's a book called the untethered soul and his name's Michael A. Singer. That one is all about thoughts and he had a spiritual awakening and, and he talks about like, you know, you are not your thoughts, you know, it's like having a bad roommate basically. But I would say read that one first because it kind of gets you, helps you with getting that right mindset for um, the next one I'm going to say, which is alcohol related. It is Alcohol Explained by William Porter. It's a book that I literally now don't read it unless you're ready to quit because it, it's going to like it's one like I said earlier once your mind's expanded you can't unknow certain things right, right and right, you're be right. like oh I can't even drink I can't drink anymore because um, this is you know you just you can't enjoy yeah. it <laughs> unless you really just don't give a shit about yourself and you know right. <laughs> because you know too much about it. it's like poison and and then yeah. h- how can I just sit there and just enjoy drinking poison now? But but the stuff that he says, like that he's actually the one who I didn't know that. Um, so I read his book when I was getting my addiction recovery certification. Like I didn't even think I was an addict until I was reading, learning all that. And I was like, oh, shit, this sounds like this sounds too familiar to me. Like, honestly, that's how I and then I was like, OK. So that's, he's the one who talked about sleep. He was actually, he's just a dude who was researching about his, about sleep. Like, why can't I sleep? And then he discovered, I think he's from England. He's got an accent and he, um, he, in England, they drink really young and it's so acceptable, even more so than it is here, especially at younger ages. But he was saying like getting into the reason of why can't I sleep? He stumbled across the connection of alcohol and sleep. And then he started really digging in. Anyway, he ends up quitting and now he's like huge with, um, so Alcohol Explained by William Porter. Um, and if you're into law of attraction stuff, the, Bi- the Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton's really good for to help you with your mindset. Yeah. And um, so I gave you three, sorry, and a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's great, that's great stuff. So I'm really curious about your cards. Can you go over that? 
Sure. Yeah. So I created these cards. It was actually, I'm going to get weird and say it was a download. Um, I was just high vibing one day, walking my dog. And, and I know how it works when you, you guys, when you're like tuned in and you're high vibing, if you quiet your mind, if you will get ideas and inspirations and it, it comes to you, it's just waiting for somebody to grab it. So I got this idea for these cards addiction recovery with the law of attraction you know not everyone can afford coaching so i wanted to have an option and it was like i said literally given to me i don't even feel like it was from my own brain it was put in me my my head so i was like oh my gosh so i created these cards it's all of the techniques that i used to quit drinking and so what you do is you just it's in some people i'm gonna tell you what i almost wish i didn't call them addiction recovery because I get people who just buy them just to start their day off, like with a positive momentum or something. And then they pick a card. Um, it, there's a picture on one side and the content on the other. It's actually published as a book because there's so much content. So it's each card teaches law of attraction, like the real way, not the positive vibes only Pollyanna way. You know, it's not like that. <laughs> it teaches real law of attraction techniques, which I've been studying since 2006. And um, it, it actually, it, it starts your day out with this positive vibe and helps you, um, get away from any type of addiction, whether it's food or, you know, I got to remind you guys that addiction can just be negative thoughts. We're addicted to negative thoughts. We're addicted to, um, overthinking. We're addicted to Netflix. We're addicted to our cell phones. We're addicted to technology. We're addicted to scrolling. You know, there's so many things like people are like, I don't have any addictions. Like we're addicted to watching the news, you know, bad news. And, and, and right. something really important is the first 30 minutes of your day and the last 30 minutes of your day need to be something positive. At least do that, at least frame your day in that way. I so, so that would be that. And the, you, that's my cards. And how do you buy those? On my website, dayonelifecoaching.com. And it's under the self help section. So those are my self help cards. And, um, but I'm on every platform. If you just want to follow me, what I do, hopefully daily inspiration on YouTube and then also Facebook, Instagram. I've got a business Facebook, I got personal. Uh, I've, I'm on TikTok even. Oh, wow. <laughs> How do we, uh, how do we, how do we follow you to search for your name? So Mary Beth Schrutter, S C H R U D D E R and day one life coaching. And one is spelled out O N E. There's also a day one with the number. That's not me. I'm, I'm D A Y O N E life coaching. So day one life coaching.com is my, um, my website. I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> Great. Well, I had a lot of fun talking today. This was very enlightening to me. I think I think uh, I I hadn't had a drink of alcohol since I talked to you last until last nice. night, and I had a little wine last night. Oh, last night. <laughs> last and it was a debate. So you know, you know, I could say I don't. I didn't feel that great this morning, but you know, I don't. I personally don't do well with alcohol, but I. Yeah, everybody's different, and I, I want to reiterate yeah. that. Like everybody. Yeah. If that differently and if this didn't resonate with you that's okay you know but yeah. if it resonated with you you know maybe you need to follow me and <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah. like really get that seed planted you know if you yeah. were kind of have that like i said earlier that sneaking suspicion that my life is going to turn around once right. i let go of this habit that's no longer serving me then you're probably yeah. right about that yeah and I thank everybody else for joining us. And I hope everybody had as much uh, value as I did today. And uh, if you want to follow us, we're on Instagram, Life Pro Podcast. Um, also, YouTube and all the major podcasts we, we broadcast. And, you know, please, please help us spread the good word. Like, follow and share. Uh, appreciate everybody and I hope everybody has a great day until next time. Thank you, Mary Beth. We appreciate you. Thank you. Have a great day.